You teach people then a formula to learn how to slow their brain waves down from beta to alpha. And when they do that, they cross the analytical mind, they stop thinking and analyzing. And in alpha, the voice in your head goes away. And instead of hearing that chatter, in alpha, you're more creative. You see in images and pictures. It's a, it's a state of imagination, right? It's a creative state. But if you're in survival all the time, it's not a time to create. So it's not a time to disconnect from your environment. There's danger out there, right? So, but if you teach people the formula on how to do that, they move into alpha. And they move out of that high beta state. When you're in high beta, what you're doing is you're perceiving that there's a danger, a threat, that it could get worse. You can't predict what's going to happen. You can't control what's going to happen. And the alarm system switches on. And then you're trying to control everything in your life. You're shifting your attention from one person to another person, to another object, to another thing, to another place, to another meeting, to another uh, text. And every one of those elements that make up your identity that's identifying with your three-dimensional reality has a neurological network. So like a lightning storm in the brain, the arousal distress hormones causes your brain to fire out of order. Very incoherent. You lose your Wi-Fi signal. You're static, right? And we're separate now. The heart, which is pumping and racing because there's a tiger, or at least primitive, from a primitive pers perspective, we're believing there's a tiger in the room, but it's what if it's just your coworker or your relative? And now the heart is pumping blood against a closed system. You're not running, you're not fighting, and you're not hiding. And the incoherence in the brain and the heart, when the waves come together, when they're out of order, they're destructive and we lose energy in our brain and our heart. So we can't think, we can't trust, we can't dream. The heart is the creative center, right? So now the person is completely out of order. They're narrowing or over-focusing on all the things that they're obsessing about that could be the next moment where they could be a, it could happen again. When a person broadens their focus and they start to slow their brain waves down and move into alpha, by putting their attention on that frequency, on that energy, on nothing, there's an entrainment that starts to happen in the brain and the brain starts to synchronize. And different parts of the brain that were once firing out of order, larger communities start to form together and what sinks in the brain links in the brain. So now all of a sudden you see the brain going, the whole entire brain, on the same rhythm, on the same wavelength. The person's experiencing wholeness, right? If you could teach a person how to actually allow their body to start to fall asleep, but at the same time they stay awake, that's called theta. And in theta, that's a very hypnotic state. The door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open to information. Now here's the relevant part. The person in their meditation is not getting information from their environment, their eyes are closed. There's music playing in the background. They're not eating, they're not tasting, they're not smelling, they're not feeling and touching. Where's the information coming from? Well, when, they're in, when they move into theta, if their body can move into a light sleep while they stay conscious and awake, and they're suggestible to information, but the information isn't coming from the environment, there's only one other place information can come from. And that's from the field. Because every, everything that's frequency in that, in that field carries information. So when the person puts their attention on frequency, all of a sudden when there's a resonance between the brain or harmonic between the brain and the field, the brain starts accessing information from the quantum field and the person has a full-on sensory experience without their senses. They move to another dimension. And when I say full-on sensory experience without their senses, I mean it's more real than this, where we're sitting right now. So think about this. If your senses were heightened by 30% right now, everything you were seeing, everything you were hearing, everything you were smelling, everything you were tasting, everything you were feeling, if your senses were heightened by 30%, your awareness of everything around you would be heightened, right? Awareness is consciousness. And you can't have consciousness without energy. So we see these dramatic changes of energy in the brain. We know the person's connecting and the, 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 the arousal is activating a little gland in the back of the brain called the pineal gland that acts like a radio receiver. It literally has crystals in it that's transducing. They call it a transducer. In our brain. Like right, right in the back right of your brain. brain. It's transducing like a radio mm -hmm. receiver, like a TV antenna. It's taking that frequency and de-encoding it, de-scrambling it into profound imagery. And the person is 
all of a sudden in a whole nother space and a whole nother time. And they're not wearing this, they're not wearing this costume to the masquerade. They're, they're in another world. And so think about this. Full on sensory experience without your senses, more real than the realm that you're currently in. Without any external substance. Without no exogenous substances, no plant medicine, no nothing. The derivatives that are made from the pineal gland fit into the same receptor sites as serotonin and melatonin, but they're an upgraded version of melatonin. Now, melatonin already causes you to dream, but now you are going to lucid dream. Melatonin already causes you to relax. You're going to make a benzodiazepine that's going to shut off all the survival centers and your brain is going to make Valium. You're going to be chillaxing. Melatonin is already an antioxidant, anti-aging, anti-heart disease, anti-stroke. All of a sudden now, you're going to produce two derivatives, the most powerful antioxidants known to man. Take the molecule, tweak it again, and the same chemical is found in hibernating animals. Hibernation, body goes into stasis, no sex drive, no appetite, no preoccupation with the environment. The body now, you don't even know you have a body. <laughs> Take the molecule, tweak it again, and you got the same chemical found in electric eels. What does that have to do with anything? Well, electric eel has an enormous amplitude of energy in their nervous system, and we have these high amplitudes. Now, the person has experienced a whole nother aspect of themselves, the unknown self. Not the self that you're aware of. The unknown self that is dimensional. And the biggest lie that we've ever been told is that we're linear beings living a linear life. We are dimensional beings living a dimensional life. Now, that experience is being recorded in the brain. That's what experience does. The emotion that the person is feeling, the arousal of ecstasy, the arousal of bliss, it's not coming from out there. The person is an awakening to this feeling, right? And the side effect of this transformative moment, this transcendental moment, is an upgrade in our biology. Sometimes you see the eczema on the person's skin they had for 10 years, then it's gone. It's gone. You see the Parkinson's, then it's gone. The person's been blind from a stroke for the last two years, they're seeing now. The person's been deaf for 10 years because of a rattlesnake bite, they're hearing again. Did they come with the intention to heal that specific? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But what's happening is lights are out in the thinking neocortex and the autonomic nervous system, the limbic brain. That's where those high amplitudes of energy are happening. And the, and the autonomic nervous system controls and coordinates all other systems. It touches every other cell in the body. So now you have a faster frequency, a more coherent frequency, and the frequency that's traveling through the autonomic nervous system is carrying information from the field of holism, of oneness. And it's jiggling the cell, and all, all the cell does is emit more coherent light and information. And the person in that moment is transformed by energy. Energy is informing matter. Mm -hmm. So now, when that person comes back to their identity, when they come back to Emilio, since experience enriches the brain, and we don't see things how they are, we see things how we are, that inner experience broadens their spectrum of reality. They see things that they never saw before because their brain wasn't wired to perceive it. At the same time, the feeling that they feel, and we've mapped this in the brain, the area of the brain that gets very excited during this moment is an area that creates long-term memories that are associated with love, joy, and bliss. This is not, the person is not in any pain at all. And that feeling tends to replace the guilt the sorrow, the loss, the grief. In one instant, the person feels like they're a different person. So, so my interest is in demystifying that process. Why? Because science says that we perceive 1% of reality. Now, don't exclude yourself from that formula. You are part of reality. So when the person has this discovery, that they're not this person, that, they're, that there's infinite possibilities that they could live in or exist in. It changes the game dramatically. You cannot go back to business as usual because you're discovering some aspect of yourself that you are unaware of because you are living in three-dimensional reality. So 
when we've been mapping this uh, in our studies, we now know how to induce the state. We know how to predict it on a brain scan. I can say, oh, this person's about ready to have a moment and we can replicate it. And so we're teaching people how to actually access information from the field for that transcendental moment, right? And that's the, the, the pineal gland is the, is the connection between the physics of the quantum field and the biology of the brain and body. And it's a latent system in the brain that we teach that once activated uh, can actually really cause a person to have a full-on, full-on mystical moment.